Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on resource gathering in Unity. By the end of this video you're going to be able to walk up to an object, collide with it, and press E to gather it. It will replace it with a smaller version of that sprite, and you'll be able to do this for multiple objects. And after a period of time it will then respawn back to its original size, and you'll also be able to go up and gather it again. It's going to know which item that you're gathering as well, so I've got this cube as well as this white cube. You're going to do that via scriptable objects, and it's going to be pretty extensible doing it that way. This video can also be used to expand to something like resource gathering by using a pickaxe or a hatchet to cut down a tree, etc. And it can also tie very easily into an inventory system. I'll be doing all of these as separate videos. So this video itself will be generic enough to use on its own, but will also tie together into an overall inventory system down the track. So if you're new to this channel and that sounds interesting, then please consider subscribing. Otherwise, let's get into the video. Okay, so I've just downloaded a package here, which is the starter assets third person package and we're going to be using this. I've also added a scriptable objects folder as well as a scripts folder. And a lot of these scripts are relatively basic, but I will mostly talk through rather than type the code just to keep the things a little bit shorter. Let's set up our scene first. So I'm going to use this cube that we've got here in our environment, and we're going to use this as our item. I will drag this out of our environment here, and I might just make it so we don't have to click that and minimize this to keep the scene a bit easier. So we've got this object here. I might move my player just backwards a little bit so we can set this to 0, 0, 0. And we'll keep it actually a 0.5 on the Y just so that it touches the ground. If I made it 0, it would go through the ground in this case. And we're going to call this our orange cube. Now with our orange cube, we're also going to create here an empty. That is going to be our resource parent. And we're also going to create a charging object. So let's duplicate our orange cube here. And I'll just move it over for an example's sake, but ultimately you could swap this out with any other sprite or any other game object you want to use. In this case, I just have these two objects here. So what I'm gonna do to show that the object is recharging is I'll just scale it to half its original size, move it to 0.25 on the Y there, so it's also still touching the ground. And then effectively when it is a charged cube, it's this size, when it's a recharging cube, it'll be this size. So I can set this back to zero, so it's inside of the other one. And then we're gonna set our parent to 000 as well and drag our recharging cube and our charged cube into our parent. Now we're going to need quite a number of scripts in order to do this process. So we'll create all the scripts now, we'll assign them to where they need to go, and then we'll go through the code for everything, touch up our game scene, and then I'll show you sort of how everything works. So we're going to create here a script that we'll call item so another script that we're going to call item, a script that we're going to call resource parent, a script called recharging resource, and finally, one more script called interaction zone. Now, at a very high level, what we're going to have here is this is going to be our item scriptable object. So this is where you're going to keep all your config for all the items that you make. It's going to make us our scriptable objects, which we'll use as our item data. We've got our item. This is going to be attached to each game object here so that it knows in the game that it is an item as well as what item it is. We're going to have a recharging resource that's going to go onto our recharging cube here, which is going to be responsible for the timer to fully recharge the resource and spawn it back into the original resource. We're going to have the resource parent. That's just going to hold the charge resource and the recharging resource as well as a swap script to swap between the two. And then finally, we're going to have an interaction zone, and that's going to be responsible for what we will set up in our scene now, which is on our player that we have here, we'll create a new empty object. I'm going to call this interaction zone. And on this interaction zone, we'll also just mark it with player, and we're going to add to it a box collider, as well as a rigid body. We're going to set the rigid body to zero, zero, and untick everything else on here and we'll set the box collider to a trigger. I'm then just going to adjust the box collider to a place in front of the player. And we'll keep it pretty simple, but pretty dirty in this case. Uh, I might just make that a bit longer. You can adjust this however you like and make it a lot smaller and thinner and so on. I just want to have a nice big thick box collider here so I can show the radius really easily for our tutorial. So on our interaction zone, I'm going to add our interaction zone script resource parent, I'm going to add our resource parent script and recharging resource. It's going to have our recharging resource and our charge cube is going to have an item script on it. Now we'll start by setting up the item SO because that's going to be very, very simple. 
We'll change this to a scriptable object script and we'll create an asset menu. We're gonna call that menu name equal to, and I might just call this create item. Now what we're actually gonna to add to this, it might just be a public int that we'll call ID and a public string that we're gonna call resource name. And now if I jump into my scene, I can go into my script objects folder. I can create a item here and I'm just gonna call this orange cube. And we'll leave it at ID zero. I'll call this orange cube. And I might just duplicate this. So for argument's sake, we could have a second one that we'll call white cube. And I'll set that to ID one and we'll make that white cube. Now that we have two different items, we're going to go into our scripts folder again and open up our item script. Again, this is another very easy script. We're just gonna create a public item SO that we'll just call our item. Hit save and jump back into our game. What this does now is for the charge cube that we added an item script on, we can now add one of our config items, which is gonna be our orange cube in this case. Now the next thing we're gonna work on is our recharging resource as well as our resource parent. So the resource parent again is very easy. We're going to get rid of the methods in here. We're gonna create a public game object and we'll call that our charged resource. And then we're gonna create a public game object that we're gonna call our recharging resource. And then we just need one method to swap between the two. So we'll create a public void swap object. And it's gonna take in a game object that we're gonna to call to activate game object, as well as another one that we're gonna to call to deactivate game object. And inside of this method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say to active geo is gonna be set to active. And to deactivate geo is gonna be set to false because that is going to deactivate it. Okay, that's our resource parent setup. And if I'm back in my game here, you can see that I've got my charge resource, which is my charge resource, and recharging cube as my recharging resource. We'll hit save here. We're getting a bit closer to having the scene fully set up. I'm also gonna click here on my charge cube, and currently we have no tag on this, and we're gonna to want to tag this because we're gonna use that as the way that we're gonna detect what we're colliding with. So I'm gonna create a tag here, and I might call that one item. And so, I can go back to this charged cube and I can change its tag to item. Now you wouldn't want to change the resource parent here because we don't want to collide with the parent. We just want to collide only with the charged cube when it is charged. So we'll hit save there. And now we're gonna jump into our interaction zone script. Now with this script, we're going to create a public list of items that we're gonna call item in radius. And the reason why we have this is because we don't just wanna collide with one item. Let's say you are making a MMORPG and there's multiple sticks on the ground and the person has to collect a whole lot of sticks. You wanna have a reference to all of them that are within the radius, not just the one of them, because then that way, once you collect one stick, you want it to immediately know the next stick it's gonna pick up. And we're also gonna use this in a FIFO method. So the first stick that you find will be the first stick that comes out and it will slowly reduce the list. Now, the next thing that we're gonna need here is two trigger methods. So we're gonna need a public void on trigger enter as well as a public void on trigger exit. Now I'm gonna change these others to col just because that's the way I like to refer to colliders. And just to keep this short, I'm going to update this script in parts and then just talk about each section. So for starters, we're gonna to wanna to know if our player has collided with a type of item. And just because we've tagged that orange cube with the type of item, this will now trigger. The next thing we wanna do is get a reference to our item. So we get the colliders game object and get the component out of it, which is the item. We store that as a variable. We'll just add a debug.log statement that says we've collided with the resource and get its name so we know what we're colliding with. And then we're gonna make sure that the item is not null and the item is not currently already inside of our item radius. And if it isn't, then we're gonna add it. And then we're gonna take basically that exact same logic and do the reverse of it for our exit trigger. So the only difference here is that when we get our reference to everything, we just want to remove this so that when we have if item is not null and the item is currently inside of our items, then we want to, rather than add, remove, and then we've done our entry and exit trigger. And I'll just remove the debug.log on that one as well so we don't get spammed with things. Okay, so now that we can correctly interact with these objects and detect when we're running into them, we now just need to do something with it once we collide with it. So we're gonna do that in our update method. So in our update method, what we want to effectively do is when we press E, we want to try and pick up the item. But we wanna make sure first that we never are trying to do this when there, we don't have any items to pick up in our list. And we're gonna do that by making sure that if items count as zero or we don't even have an items in radius, then we're just gonna return and we're never gonna run any of the script. Otherwise, if we press the input key down key code of E, so if we press the letter E, then we wanna call a pickup script 
and this pickup script in this case is going to be passing in the items radius at element zero. So this is what I was talking about the first in first out. We want to grab the very first item that we collided with, not the most recent one. Okay, so obviously this method doesn't exist yet, so we can hit alt enter and it will automatically create it for us. I'm just going to change this to target item just because we have a few things called item in here at the moment and that will make it a little bit easier to see. And the first thing we're going to add is a null check to make sure that we at least have a target item when we attempt to pick something up. We'll add a debug.log statement that is going to reference the target items item and then get its resource name. So in this case, we're going into the item, we're grabbing the item SO out of this, and we're grabbing its resource name here. So remember, I called this orange cube for my orange cube as an example. This is also the point where you would actually add the item to your inventory. Now, we're not going to cover that in this one here just because I want to keep this as generic as I can without getting to a full inventory system. Then we're going to remove the item from our list in items in radius because we're no longer going to have that item because we've now just picked it up. Then in the target item, we're going to get its game object as well as its parent resource. So we know the parent resource object that we've got here. So we're kind of traversing the tree a little bit here. So in our game object, we've collided with this, specifically the item script. We're grabbing the game object, which is our charge cube, and then we're grabbing its parent, which is our parent resource, and grabbing this parent resource script. So then we have a reference to our parent resource that allows us to then call our swap object on this, which will allow us to swap to the recharging resource from the charged resource. So we're going to save this now, we're going to jump back into Unity, and we're just going to turn off our recharging cube here on both of these objects because they should be inactive until they're made active by the swapping process. So I'm going to hit save and then we're going to hit play. Okay, so if I click my interaction zone and I walk forwards, you can see I get my element in there. And if I press E, you can see it says picked up an orange cube. You can also see that it's changed it to the recharging resource. And if I press E again, we get two little recharging ones. But right now, obviously, they don't recharge. But we are able to pick up our orange cubes, which is great. So we can pick up our orange cubes, swap them to this resource. And now all we have to do is effectively swap them back. And we're going to do that inside of our scripts, our recharging resource script. Now inside of our recharging resource, we're going to get a parent reference. So we're going to say resource parent, and we'll just call that resource parent. So that's going to be used to swap back to the charged resource once you've hit the end of the timer. And then we're going to create that timer. So we'll have a serialized field. This will be a float that we're going to call time to recharge. And in this case, I might just set it to, let's say 10F. And then we'll do another serialized field. That serialized field will have a float that we're just going to call timer. And this is going to be the current time of our timer. Now at the very beginning, we're going to set timer equal to time to recharge, just so that we start the timer at the max. And then all we need to do, very simple timer, timer minus equals time dot delta time. Then we're going to say if timer is less than or equal to zero F, then all we want to do is basically go back to our original object. So we're going to say resource parent, the one that we're going to activate in this case is the charged resource. And resource parent, the one that we're going to deactivate is going to be recharging resource. And then the last step that we need to do is just set the timer back to time to recharge again, so that when this gets reactivated, it then starts the timer again and ticks back up and recharges again. So we'll hit save. We'll jump back into Unity again. And then the only thing we have to do here is set the resource parent to the parent in this case. And I might do that on both just because we would prefab this normally, but in this case, I have both in the scene. So we'll hit save and hit play. And you should see here on the left-hand side in the hierarchy, we've got our resource parent and our charge cube that's currently active. And then if I go up and collect these and walk off, they are recharging. And then after a few seconds, we should see that the charged ones become active again. And in my game scene, they swap back to being active. And then I should be able to walk up to them again and collect them again. And just to make this last one a little bit different as well, I might change this here to the white cube and change its material. I believe there is a white. Yes, there is. And I would also need to change its child as well to be the white material underneath it as well. What we should see in the console is I should pick up an orange cube and I should pick up a white cube and then they will recharge on their own and respawn the same way. And that's it. We've fully done a recharging resource system. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you, and I hope this brought you value. If it did, please consider subscribing, and I will see you guys in the next one. As always, these videos wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. In the diamond tier, we have Infinite Canvas. In the emerald tier, we have Demand Games. In the gold tier, we have Castle Coders, Zope, and Maths Math. In the silver tier, we have Sunday Roast, Jim Hawkins with Halloumi, and Hickey92. Thank you all. If you'd like to sign up, the link is down the bottom right there. It's patreon.com slash and I will see you guys in the next video.